surrounded by the red roofs of Londoners homes is Kew Gardens. It's a world garden for in it grow flowers and shrubs and trees from every country in the world. It's also a playground where Londoners seeking a moment of release from ward work may rest while their children play. They come to queue in early spring when yellow daffodils bring thoughts of summer sunshine. They come to queue in the bright light of May when the cherry blossom is falling. And when Japanese cherry and English apple are gone, like blue sea waves, the bluebells flow through the woods. Then English spring is at its height. They come to see the flowers from mountain peaks. Flowers from the topless Himalayas, the Rockies, the Andes and the Alps. Flowers come down from the roof of the world to decorate the rock garden. In the hothouses, the air is heated and continually sprayed with water until it's heavy with moisture. And here is to be seen a gallery of nature's most exotic creations from tropic swamp and jungle. The struggle for survival in the teeming life of the tropics has produced plants with ingenious devices for protection and attack. There are plants that live by extracting nitrogen from insects instead of from the soil. There's a scented sticky juice on these hairs. Flies are attracted by the scent and caught. If insects touch the center of that leaf, Plants' digestive juices extract the nitrogen. If an animal touches this mimosa, or if heat is brought near it, it pretends to die. Then there are plants which grow in the desert. They're ordinary plants, but they've learned to store food in their fleshy leaves to last them through long periods of drought. Sometimes the leaf is covered with fur to reduce evaporation. Sometimes the food is stored in the stems and the leaves disappear or become prickles, but always they modify their shape as they try to reduce the surface of skin exposed to the sun. Now the shape which mathematically exposes the least surface is the sphere. Here from South Africa is the perfect cactus, a small round ball. Yet these weird plants produce lovely flowers for like all plants, they attract the bees and insects which pollinate them by means of perfume and bright color.
And while the people sit beneath the trees and the clouds drift by, the real work of Q is going on behind the scenes. In this cabinet was kept the private flower collection of Sir William Hooker, who in 1841 was invited to organize Q as a center for the study of the world's botany. Today, after a hundred years, 10 great floors of specimen cases now form the herbarium. And Kew has become the great center for naming and classification of the world's plants. In this collection, there are six or seven million specimens. Parcels of specimens arrive every week from scientific workers and collectors all over the world. After sorting, they are passed to the mounting staff who gum or stitch them to these stiff paper mounts. They are then ready to be examined, classified, and added to the collection. Now many of these specimens have been sent by botanists from other institutions abroad to have their names checked and confirmed by the Q staff. Mr. Cotton, keeper of the herbarium, is tracing the identity of the specimen on the table. It is from Brazil. Many features must be checked, the size, shape and texture of the leaves, but above all the structure of the flower and the nature of the fruit. When all these features agree with those of an authentically named specimen and with descriptions in reference books, then the identification is complete. The herbarium renders another service to world botany. A diseased bamboo from South America is being examined. Microscopic drawings are made of the fungus. These will be compared with drawings and descriptions in reference books, and so the disease may be diagnosed, and perhaps a crop saved from destruction. Out of all the specimens submitted to Kew, a hundred or more new species may be found each year. New plants that have never been seen before. Some of these are grown from seeds at Kew and are painted for reproduction in the botanical journals which keep botanists in touch with each other's work all over the world. Now perhaps you think this work is too academic to have a practical value. Well, millions may benefit one day from the fact that Kew is experimenting with this red flower. It's a type of wild banana from New Guinea. Through over-cultivation, banana plantations everywhere are losing their powers of resistance to disease. Kew hopes by crossing the plantation banana with the wild banana to produce seedlings which will combine the qualities of the commercial banana with the disease resistance of the wild type. If this can be done, the threat to plantations will have been removed. This type of work is a branch of what is called economic botany. At Kew, it's controlled by Sir Geoffrey Evans. Other experiments he is carrying out are aimed at improving the quality and yield of West African cocoa. Buds are cut from selected plants imported from Central America, where this plant is a native. Then a seedling of the West African stock, the stock which is to be improved, is taken and an incision cut in its stem. Into this incision is fitted the American bud. It's tied up with bass, and the American bud with its better quality and yield grows on the African stock. A few dozen such plants form a basis for improving all the cocoa plantations of West Africa. So from Kew go out the cuttings which will improve plantation crops in every country. Plantations of cocoa, banana, vegetable oils, varnishes, and medicinal herbs. And these crops will be improved for the benefit of all the world. The work goes on in war as in peace, for Q looks ahead and works for the people of the future. the red roofs of Londoners homes is Kew Gardens. It's a world garden for in it grow flowers and shrubs and trees from every country in the world. It's also a playground where Londoners seeking a moment of release from war and work may rest while their children play.
And when Japanese cherry and English apple are gone, like blue sea waves, the bluebells flow through the woods. Then English spring is at its height. Surrounded by... They come to see the flowers from mountain peaks, flowers from the topless Himalayas, the Rockies, the... They come to queue in early spring when yellow daffodils bring thoughts of summer sunshine. They come to queue in the bright light of May when the cherry blossom is falling. 